we have something really special today. We got a chance to sit down with the developers of an amazing game called Bikaru. We asked them some questions and they have some great answers that we wanted to share with you guys. And we got them to sign some posters and t-shirts and we're gonna give them away. So be sure to stay tuned until the end of the video. We'll tell you how you can do that. So it's gonna be really fun. Yeah, if you watched yes. our Tokyo Game Show vlog, you saw us sitting down with those developers and afterwards they said, you know, we had a couple more things that we wanted to say on those topics you asked us and they sent over this very extensive uh, information that yes. I think I don't think has come out yet about the making of the game and kind of their vision for the game that we just wanted to share with all of you. Yes. So uh, these are responses from Etsunobu Ebisu and Tadanora uh, Tsukawaki from Goodfield. Mm -hmm. uh, Ebisu-san is the president and CEO, and he is really like a legend in the industry. Oh, yeah. And uh, Tsukawaki-san is the head of the art department um, and the art director uh, on Bikaru. Yeah. So yeah. let's jump right in to these uh, topics here. The first is just this idea of blending old and new Japan, which mm -hmm. I think is such like a fun and unique setting for this game? Like, yeah. how did they get to this uh, as they were making Bikaro? So this is a response from Tsukawaki-san. The concept for the world of Bikaro is based on Japanese fairy tales and legends. When I was a child, there was a TV anime called Manga Nippon Mukashi Banashi, which aired various fairy tales as short episodes each week with a different art style every time, and I loved it. Because of that, I always thought about creating a world where various fairy tales could cross over, and in my private time, I have continuously drawn illustrations and comics with this theme. When we started working on this title, I received a request from Abisu-san to set it in Japan, and I thought the idea would be a great fit for the project, so I made the concept for the world. The reason for mixing modern Japan with old Japan is that it allows us to incorporate and reimagine many familiar motifs into the game as gimmicks, locations, enemies, and more. I adopted this idea thinking that taking existing elements and adapting them would create a relatable fantasy for the players. That's so cool that he was inspired by something from his childhood and was able to translate that, and it totally works in this, in this game. We... We're talking to him a lot about Gion Matsuri, which is a festival that happens in Kyoto every year. And he, and th this is a level, a stage in the game that you get to play. And he was um, just recounting his childhood memories, um, you know, being at festivals like that. So you can really see that play out. Well, that, let's talk about that more because they have more on that here. So ah. one, one of the things that's so cool is each stage in the game is a different city in Japan, like a, right, re a, real, a real city. Life city. And we were yeah. asking them, like, how did you decide, like, what the appropriate level was for each of those stages? Because all of these cities have their characteristic, you know, locations or cultures mm -hmm. or whatever. So yeah. here's what they had to say. Since each prefecture becomes an action stage, we couldn't let the motif alone take precedence. Therefore, we first planned how each stage would be composed in terms of gameplay. After that, we aligned it with the game's progress plot selected motifs from the designated locations and worked on visualizing the gameplay and location while creating the framework for each level. For example, in the stage inspired by Kyoto's Gion Festival, we wanted to introduce the first forced scrolling stage in the middle of the game once players had gotten familiar with the controls. Since it's the first forced scrolling stage, we set the scroll speed to slow and structured the stage around moderate combat and platforming where players jump from platform to platform. These became the main gameplay elements for this stage. Once the core gameplay was decided, we then looked for a motif from the Kansai region, specifically Area 4 of the scenario, where we could best express the force scrolling mechanic. Kyoto's Gion Festival, one of Japan's most famous festivals, was an attractive motif for giving the stage a traditional Japanese aesthetic. Moreover, the parade floats known as Yamahoko seemed to be a good match for the force scrolling mechanic, and since Yamahoko come in various shapes, we could make visual adjustments to the float design without it feeling out of place in the level. For these reasons, we decided to use Kyoto's Gion Festival as the motif for this stage. The other stages were developed similarly following the process of gameplay to location. And yeah, if, um, I think people who've played the game will agree that's one of the standout stages. But there's yeah. just so many others where it's like, oh, I, rem I, I know, I know this landmark that's mm -hmm. here, exactly. or they've kind of remixed something that is well known about this yeah. location 
in a game that's in a way that's really fun. Yeah, they do add some like fantastical elements to it to make you still feel very like fairy tale like. But it's cool that it's rooted in you know reality and things that are actually happening in Japan. Yeah. Um, the next thing we asked them about is just the, the overall look of the game, yeah. which is perfect um, since we have the art director. We had the art director with us, and you know, there's a lot of games now on like the PS5 that's pushing 4K and you know pushing pixels, and you know this game is on the Switch. Yeah, obviously has has a different approach, but looks really looks beautiful, amazing. So yeah. uh, this is another question, or another response from Tsukawaki San, and here is what he had to say. Thanks very much. As the art director, your kind words mean a lot to me. Regarding the art style, we focused on how to incorporate traditional Japanese elements into the visuals. Overall, we were inspired by the classic Japanese ukiyo-e, woodblock print, deformed style. This influenced various aspects of the game from natural objects and buildings and effects. If you take a closer look at the game screen, you might notice that natural elements like the soil, water, trees, and ground are subtly embedded with traditional Japanese wagata patterns. These are designs that have been used in Japanese textiles for centuries, each with its own meaning. We aim to create a landscape composed of these details to ev evoke a traditional Japanese feel. At the same time, we paid attention to making the color scheme of the overall screen vibrant without hindering gameplay. For the characters, instead of going for a cool look, we designed them to have a more comical feel. As I always do in action games, I paid close attention to ensuring that each character's accessories, details, and design were functional and supported their role and movement requirements within the game. This point about the um, the little elements that are like within the water, within the soil, I, yeah. I totally noticed that. I did too. And it yeah. really adds a lot. It does. It t definitely gives you that like traditional feel and almost more of like a storybook feel as well, right. adding those kind of patterns into nature. Um, and it gives the game such like a cool aesthetic. And I also love how he says like, even though they paid a lot of attention to the art style and, and things like that, they made it feel like functional to the characters. Like, you really notice that like in the gameplay um, elements of like the, the characters, you know that every, you know, accessory they have, everything that they're holding, like it has some sort of gameplay um, element to it as well. So that's, that's pretty cool that he thought about it from so many different perspectives. Yeah. All right, our last question is of interest to a lot of people. Oh, yeah. One of the collectibles as you go through each stage are these cute little guys who will tell you trivia. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of times, this is just general purpose trivia um, that doesn't necessarily have something to do with Baccaro, but it's yeah. just like life trivia. Life, life and tips. <laughs> it has caught the attention of a lot of people. They're like, wow, that's that's some interesting stuff. Or some people have even said that they've, they've followed the advice. And, like, and it hey, works. Hey, this works. So let's hear what they had to say about this. Japan is full of interesting trivia and folk crafts from all over the country. Since the game is set across Japan, we wanted to incorporate these elements into the game cycle. So we implemented the collection of trivia and souvenirs. The idea for trivia came about when, during the creation of collectible elements, we realized that creating models would be too resource intensive. So we explored other ways to implement collectibles and came up with this idea as a solution. For the content of the trivia, we avoided textbook-like information, aiming instead for something more casual and fun. The ideal trivia was knowledge that isn't necessary to know, but would make you go, oh really, when you learn it. <laughs> The whole team contributed ideas for the content. Since we all come from different regions, we asked everyone to provide trivia from their hometowns, and we worked together to complete it. We're pleasantly surprised by the positive reception, especially from overseas players who said, it's fun to learn about Japan. It makes us very happy. That's so cool that they have a team that um, kind of contributed to all of this, and it's probably all stuff that like their moms told them when they are little kids. One of the points of trivia was if you have a sore throat, gargle with green tea. Somebody in our community did that, and they said, I feel much and better. It works. It works. Yeah. Can't argue Gotta with that. listen to your mom. Yes. You know, I bet this is all like, mom, my mom told me when I was little to do X. Right. And and that's how I made it into this game. But it's very charming. Yeah. And very personal. And I think that really speaks a lot to just the overall, you know, feel of the of the game and this team overall. So, yeah, I just love it. Absolutely. So great. Okay. So thanks to Abisu-san and Tsukawaki-san for answering these questions. They did also just announce breaking news that they're yes, releasing physical. a physical version Ooh. of Bikero. So if you are somebody who likes to prioritize physical, yeah. that will be coming soon. You should get it. All right. Now the details of this very cool giveaway. Yes. So the, the giveaway, um, we are going to be picking two winners to each get one t-shirt and one poster. Both the t-shirt and 
the poster is signed. Whoa! So it's super cool, and of course, the art style for this game is absolutely amazing. And and they custom made the poster for this giveaway. Yes. So one of a kind.、Um, so to enter, you have to be subscribed to us on Patreon. We are patreon.com/slash/kitandkrista. And for、we、this have... giveaway, if you would like to sign up, even at the free tier, yes, that is totally fine. Exactly. We have a free tier. We have many other tiers, but any tier is okay as part of this giveaway. And we would love for you to send us a cool screenshot from your Bokero game. There is a demo out for this game, so you can send us a screenshot、yes. from the demo if you like. But we just love to see, you know, what you think is cool or interesting as you've been playing through Bokero.、Um, there's certainly tons of beautiful vistas and sceneries to choose from. So send us one that you love, and we'll pick two winners. It's gonna、yeah. be great. We will. Yes. Awesome.、Right. Well, it's been fun to dig into the details of Bakero a、yes. little bit more. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, wrapping it up now, and we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.